How's it going guys? It's Ryan here and welcome uh, to this guide to the Twin Furies Avirus and Nomura. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, so what I put up on the screen is some general information about Avirus and Nomura. It's worth taking note of and that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's jump right into the guide. The God Wars Dungeon 2 is in the heart of Gilinor. The three best ways to get there would be first off, using basic or golden tools from the treasure hunter. If you have those, they have a teleport option on them. Other than that, you could either use a teleport tab or simply use the bandit camp lodestone and then run southeast. Once you're inside, run northwest and begin attacking Zamorak followers. Now, it is better to pot up and use prayers for this because you actually get a multiplier uh, that will multiply your kill count. Uh, this can max out at 300%, which would mean every single Zamorak follower you kill will count towards three kill count. Now, it's also important to note that you can actually keep this kill count and save it up. So you can leave the Heart of Gilnor, leave God Wars 2, and then come back and your kill count will be the same. Uh, so make sure you get your 40 kill count, which is required to enter the fight. Now, once you've got 40 kill count, run all the way northwest and you'll find the Zamrock encampment. Pass through the barrier and you'll be ready to take on the Furies. But first, we should probably talk about gear. When you're first learning how to kill this boss, I'd strongly recommend bringing a Beast of Burden. It just gives you more room for error because you have more emergency food. As an advanced user, you can use a Unicorn, Nile, or Steel Titan depending on your personal preference. Personally, I like a Unicorn. For potions, it's pretty simple. Use the best stat boosting potions you can. Now we're going to talk about gear. Effectively, you're going to want to use the highest tiered armor and weapons you have available. Power armor is more useful than tank armor, because DPS is extremely important at certain parts of this fight. Melee is the best combat style to use due to the berserk ability, but is by no means required to kill this boss, it's just... I'd recommend it. If you can use a Noxious Scythe or a Dragon Rider Lance, it will improve your DPS. That's because you can attack multiple targets at the same time. This is an example of the minimum gear I would bring to this boss. You're wearing full bandos and you're using a tier 80 weapon. Uh, now, the first upgrade you can make for weapons is you could go to level 85 weapons. You could either go to the Tetsa Katana and wash it Zaki, you could go to the Twin Furies Blades of Avirus and Nomura, or you could go to Ripper Demon Claws. Uh, the other option for level 85 would be the Dragon Rider Lance, although it's extremely expensive. Alright, so the next obvious gear upgrade would be to go to tier 90 weapons. Uh, I'm going to be using Drygores for this video, although if you have a Scythe, that's going to be even better. Uh, so that's the obvious one. If you have them, definitely bring them. Uh, now, one other thing I was going to add is that you can switch out that Amulet of Souls for a Brawler's Blood Necklace. It's up to personal preference and up to what you want to use. Uh, now, when we're looking at armor, it's just as easy. Uh, you could go from Bandos to Augmented Torva. Uh, the other option would be to go to Malevolent, and it's totally up to personal preference and what you want to bring. Uh, although you can go in Malevolent or Torva, Bandos is more than enough. I'm going to be using Bandos for making this video, and I lasted a full hour, a full instance, uh, wearing my full Bandos. So if you've got the better gear, by all means bring it, but it's not required. And now next thing is to kill this boss, you need a shield. Does not matter what that shield is, it could be a Malevolent Kite Shield, it could be a Bandos War Shield, or it could even be a Defender. It just needs to be something to allow you to use the defensive abilities. Uh, the reason it doesn't matter is because you're not going to be wearing the shield for any amount of time. All you have to do is put it on, use one ability, and then you take it off again and resume the fight. Okay, now last thing I'm going to say about gear is I've got a Sign of Life here. I've got the Supreme Brawler Aura. You could also swap this out for Vampirism. Would be very, very recommended, uh, and you'll have a good time with that as well. Uh, and other than that, uh, the rest of it is quite straightforward. Uh, if you have any other specific gear related questions, just let me know and I will get to you in the comments below. Alright, now for the important part of the guide. These are all of the attacks you're going to want to look out for. All the special attacks and everything that has a certain mechanic that will help you get more efficient kills and help you stay alive. Uh, so the three attacks are the Surge Attack, the Ceiling Collapse, and the Ultimate Ability Bomb. These attacks follow rotations, which means you will always know what's coming next. For example, if the kill starts off with a surge attack, you know that a ceiling collapse is coming up next and then an ultimate ability bomb. After the bomb, it'll go back to a surge attack again, and it will follow that pattern throughout the whole thing. Now, first off, we're going to talk about the surge attack. For the sake of simplification, I'm going to call the two twins red and white. For the surge attack, a virus will teleport to the wall of the arena and surge towards you. It will be a melee type attack. To avoid it, move out of the linear path. A virus will do this four times per cycle. When the kill starts, you're going to want to attack red. You're only going to get one or two attacks on red, uh, and then white is going to jump to the side. At this point, it's quite simple. You just need to stay out of the way of white. White will do this the exact same way every single time, and will do it a total of four times. Uh, she will teleport to the side of the room, and then she will surge in a straight line. She can't do it diagonally, and it's always the same. Might take you a couple kills to get used to it, but it always happens the exact same way. If you're hit by this attack, it'll hit you for between 1,000 and 2,500 melee type damage. The next attack we're going to be talking about is the Ceiling Collapse. Nomura will teleport to a tile in the arena, and the ceiling will start to collapse. 
This is a ranged type attack that hits approximately 800 damage per tick. To avoid it, run or surge within a 4x4 square of Nemora. Switch your Protect Prayers to Pray Melee. What you'll see here is Red is about to teleport to the side of the arena. Because of how far she teleports sometimes, it might be good to have Surge on your action bar just in case. Now you're going to switch to Protect Melee because White only attacks you with Melee. So while the ceiling is collapsing, all you have to do is protect, Pray Protect from Melee and get your Adrenaline up. That's all. Very easy to defend, very simple. It's also worth noting that most of the time Red won't teleport that far and usually it's just a couple squares away from you. Alright, now for the ultimate ability bomb. This is the most important attack to pay attention to because this is what's going to make or break your kill speed. How this works is both Furies will go to the center of the room and an adrenaline bar will lower. While in this state, you will deal 50% extra damage to the Furies. If the adrenaline bar reaches zero, it will explode. What you have to do before this bar reaches zero is either kill the Furies, uh, if you do not kill them, you have to put on your shield very briefly and use the resonance ability. This will stop the attack from hitting you. If you're using melee combat, this is the time to Zerk, uh, because with 50% extra damage as well as the Berserk, you will be hitting mass damage on the Furies. Uh, so what you want to do is you can put on Soul Split if you have it, and all you want to do is get as much DPS out on the Furies as the Adrenaline Bar lowers. Once the Adrenaline Bar is almost lowered, you want to quickly switch to your Shield or Defender and use the Resonance ability. If you do not do this in time, you will be hit for 3 to 7,000 damage. Alright, so those are all of the attacks and mechanics you're going to want to pay attention to. So now I'm going to go through an entire kill where we're going to put it all together. I'm also going to give you some tips on what protection prayers to use when. Let's do it. Alright, let's put it all together. The kill's going to start and you're going to get on red, uh, while white does her jumpy surge attack. Uh, so what you want to make sure you're doing is stay out of the way of the surge attack because it will mess up your DPS if you have to eat any food. Uh, so you want to stay out of the way of that surge attack uh, while getting your adrenaline up on red. Uh, now that's the fourth jump, uh, so now there's going to be a brief time when you can attack both Furies. What you're going to do now is just use a quick slaughter under red, walk under red, uh, switch protect from melee, and then get on white. Uh, the reason you're getting on white now is because red will become unattackable when she teleports away. So as red is teleported away, you're going to quickly surge or run underneath red, and that way you are immune to the ceiling collapsing. Uh, at this point, you're going to want to get yourself full adrenaline from attacking white. Uh, so you're going to be attacking white, and you're going to wait till you get full adrenaline. Once your adrenaline is full uh, and the ceiling stops collapsing, you're going to want to move back into the center of the room and you're going to want to use Berserk. If you have an adrenaline pot, you can use it now as well, but it is not required. Now you're going to do a little bit of DPS on the Twin Furies uh, before they go into their bomb attack. Uh, now, as the bomb happens, you just want to do as much damage per second as you possibly can. As you can see, a ton of 10,000s are happening, a ton of really high hits. That's because of the Berserk and the 50% damage bonus. Now, as this starts to get lower, you want to pay attention to it, be mindful, and then quickly switch and do your resonance. Uh, once the resonance is done, uh, you're going to resume attacking. Uh, you can quickly do a slaughter and walk under any one of the Furies, and then you're going to want to get on red to finish the kill. Uh, you can either soul split now, or you could go back to protect from ranged. Uh, and that's the whole kill. It's as simple as that. Uh, so if your kill speed is slower than mine, uh, you'll just keep going through the phases over and over again until you manage to get the kill. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. Okay, so now everyone's favorite part about bossing, the drops. What can you get from this boss? Uh, so first and foremost, you can get the Blades of Avirus and Nomura. These are level 85 weapons with tier 90 accuracy and tier 80 damage. Next up, you can get the Dormant Anima Core bodies, legs, and helmets, uh, along with the Crest of Zamorak. This will turn your Dormant Anima Core pieces into uh, Zamorak Anima Core pieces, which are level 80 power ranged gear with similar stats to Pernix. And now the next drops are the Avirus's Braid and Nemora's Braid. These are both boss pets. Uh, but for sure, the best part about this boss is the common drops. The common drops are worth, on average, 150k each. Uh, you get drops like Infernal Ashes, Wines of Zamrock, Rune Bars, Magic Logs, Coal, Runite Ore, Raw Sharks, and Uncut Dragonstones. The other great thing about the drops from these bosses uh, is that everything is notable, everything is stackable, so you don't need to bank at all. Uh, the only thing that's limiting your trip is your food. Alright guys, uh, from the guide, I just want to quickly do this boss for one hour and see how much money I could make. Uh, so I timed it with my Vampirism Aura and the one instance, uh, and I made just over 5 million in one hour, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this boss is really good money. Even though I didn't get any drops, I made 5 million. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to throw that in to say this boss is incredibly good money. Uh, last thing is if anyone is interested on finding out how the Twin Blades are, I made a testing video with them where I killed the Queen Black Dragon, I tried them out at Araxor, and I also went PKing with them. So if you're interested in that, click on the screen right now. Uh, now, that's going to be it for this guide. Hopefully you all enjoyed. If anyone has any questions about anything, let me know in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great one, and as always, peace out!